with iPad OS and yes, an iPhone or even an iPod touch running iOS 13, you can finally access external files. Not just photos, not just videos, but honest to Unix external documents, assets, and anything else just by plugging in a USB drive, stick, even SD or compact flash card. You can even open photos and video directly in editing apps and access Samba shares right in the files app with some caveats limitations, and of course, adapters. Hey, this is still iOS we're talking about here. So hit subscribe, mount that bell gizmo so you don't miss the next video deep dive, and then let's break it all down. I'm Rene Ritchie, and this is Vector. iOS has been at war with traditional file systems since the very beginning. It's always had a traditional file system, of course, because it's always been based on macOS, which is based on BSD Unix. But for the sake of simplicity, Apple has kept it hidden completely away from users. And for the sake of security, sandboxed each part completely away from each and every other part. In wanting to make the computer for everyone else, everyone who always felt alienated and off-put by traditional computers and their early days of computer science paradigms, part of what Apple wanted to do was save the mainstream from the tyranny of, you guessed it, the file system. Now, other paradigms have been tried before, including soups and tags and search-based approaches, but iOS never really seemed to have any other plan besides not letting users access the file system at all. But understanding people needed files, Apple ended up leaving them siloed within apps. That's right, the file only existed in the app that created it and couldn't be seen or used anywhere else by anything else, which was terrible, because instead of having to remember which folder you saved something into, now you had to remember which app you used to create it in. Like which of the six notes app you installed during that late night binge download session. And then, lords of cobalt help you if you found a better notes app and deleted an older one, because as that app went away, all of its files went away with it. All that because Apple didn't quite yet understand this singular truth. If you refuse the bad but can't come up with the better, stubbornly engineering around it only creates the worse. And the absolute most frustrating part of all of this was that Apple had a pretty good solution staring them right in their collective faces from the very first days of iOS, Image Picker and the Photos app. It allowed for a centralized repository of photos and videos that other apps could open and save to, and a centralized app that we could open to see everything we had saved. And if you wanted it, you could even create a single layer of folders, or in this case, albums for basic organization. It got better over time. We got smart albums. Extensibility allowed for multiple apps to edit the same files without saving new copies all the time. Computer vision gave us the beginnings of real search. And with iOS 13, you can import photos directly from your camera into apps like Lightroom. No preload into photos necessary. Just doing that, just that for everything else, a document picker and a files app would satisfy Apple and a lot of users. I might have written exactly that, I don't know, for six or seven years running. But then a couple of years ago, a miracle happened. Apple gave us a document picker and a files app and even an external storage provider framework for non-Apple online services like Dropbox and all the various drives. And the skies opened and the sun shone down and it was good. You could now plug in any online storage account and access any of your files on it just as easily as you could local files, but apps still couldn't access entire directories for batch operations and you still couldn't plug in any physical storage devices over USB and access anything on them at all. Not drives, not cards, not nothing. Sure, theoretically, the cloud was better. Apple was super hyped about the world going wireless and it meant nothing extra to carry with you and nothing physical that could get lost, damaged, stolen, or could be a security risk like a juice jack attack where the USB firmware itself was converted into a malware to hack your system. But theories don't often survive the real world and SneakerNet, where you walk files around between devices, had remained not only relevant but necessary long past the advent of the internet. So again, by denying people a simple, ubiquitous, if not great solution and not providing anything better, we all just ended up the worse for it. Until now. 
That's right, where previously the document picker let you browse through directories, but you could only actually pick one individual file at a time, now you can pick an entire directory. Accessing a directory requires an explicit user action, so apps can't just access it on their own, behind your back. But once you pick a directory yourself, the app that you're using is granted recursive access to that directory. Developers can set a default directory, so you don't always have to start at the top and spelunk your way down. They can also choose to always show file extensions by default and to show rich thumbnails via quick look if they want to. There's also a new section under privacy in settings that lists all apps you've granted folder access to, so you can switch that access on or off anytime you like. If a folder is in iCloud, you can now choose to share the entire folder as well, and it works just like you'd expect it to work, like it has in other online storage systems for years. Generate a link, share it, and whomever you share it with can access everything in the folder and add, remove, and change as they see fit. You can also zip and unzip, write in files, search with suggestions, and there's a plethora of keyboard shortcuts now. Lastly, there's a new column view in the Files app that lets you see the browse sidebar, two levels of hierarchy, and a detail view with a big thumbnail, quick actions that are appropriate to the type of file, like markup for PDF or rotate for an image, plus rich metadata and any and all the tags that you have applied. It makes working with files much, much easier and more visual, and it's my new go-to. For external USB support, it includes everything from SD and compact flashcards to thumb drives to HD and SSD drives to, yeah, full-on RAID arrays. But there are a few caveats. First, iOS only supports USB, not Thunderbolt. Doesn't matter if USB-C and Thunderbolt 3 connectors look exactly alike, they aren't. Thunderbolt requires PCIe lanes and, internal storage controller aside, iOS just doesn't surface that architecture yet. Second, iOS only supports unencrypted APFS, the new Apple file system, unencrypted HFS+, the old Apple file system, or the far more ubiquitous FAT or XFAT. No encrypted APFS or HFS+, at least not yet. Third, iOS doesn't have any type of disk utility functionality. That means you can't format, reformat, partition, or do any other type of routine maintenance or management on drives. In other words, you dance with the formatting that brought you, or in this case, that you brought. Now, with multiple formats comes increased complexity. For example, iOS has previously only had to deal with case-sensitive file systems. FAT and XFAT are case-insensitive, and external APFS and HFS Plus volumes can be configured as insensitive as well. Hopefully, developers will figure that out on their end so we users won't have to on ours. Same with handling the potentially longer read-write times, higher latency across local and external storage, and the different file systems. Likewise, external storage can be removed, even yanked out, and network shares can go offline or the connection can suddenly fail. iOS won't give you panicky dialogues the way macOS does, chiding you for not ejecting the storage first. With iOS, you're not meant to have to eject it. That's because iOS only has to deal with files being copied or moved right now, not being potentially overwritten at the time, like macOS does, which means the chances of data loss are way, way, way smaller but developers are expected to just elegantly handle that as well. You can access external devices via USB-C on the latest iPad Pro directly, and on every other device capable of running iOS 13 with every other combination of USB and Lightning through the appropriate adapter, of course, mostly. Plugging into a 2018 iPad Pro over USB-C works pretty much exactly as you'd expect. Plugging into an older iPad or any iPhone or iPod Touch has some limitations, because Lightning. Basically, you should be fine with any USB 2.0, aka low power USB sticks, or SD or CF cards. Just plug and go. For any USB 3.0 or later, aka higher power draw, USB sticks or USB drives, you'll need to give them power as well. That means using an adapter or a hub that lets you not only plug in the drive, but plug into power at the same time. And yeah, that's one of the primary reasons I'm personally long past ready for Apple to go all in on USB-C across all products. Most people won't be plugging SSD into their iPhones, but damn it, I'm sure I'll find the need to eventually. Okay, so when you plug in, the USB storage will show up in the browse section, just like local on my iPad or on my iPhone storage iCloud Drive, or any other online storage. It'll also show up in the document picker within other apps, same as all those other types of storage as well. So, if you want to plug a USB stick in with a bunch of songs or comics or other files, you still won't be able to open them in Apple's Music or Books app. 
But if another player or viewer app adds support for iOS 13 files, you will be able to open them right through there. Even edit them in place directly on the external storage. Unlike macOS though, there's still no progress bar to lie to you, reassuringly, about how much of a file has opened, moved, or saved back out, at least not by default. Now, Apple didn't just capitulate completely to the gods of old school compute here. They didn't just move the USB stack from the Mac to iOS any more than they just ported over the Finder. <laughs> Sorry, nerds. No, Apple built a new USB stack, a more secure USB stack, just for external files. Now, iOS has always been built on process and privilege separation, and this is in keeping with that. Nothing gets near the kernel. It's all sandboxed, supports only files, no executables, and should be hardened against any current juice jack or other types of malware attacks. In addition to external storage, Apple has also added support for SMB 3.0 shares on servers. You can access them right in the Files app over Ethernet, Wi-Fi, even cellular data if your iOS device has it. Network shares, like USB storage, will show up in the Browse column as well. Unfortunately, no support yet for FTP or SFTP, but I want it. You can add SMB shares by using the Connect to Server action or by hitting Command K on a keyboard if you have one attached, same as on the Mac. Apple has also added the Windows search protocol to iOS 13 and iPadOS. So if your server supports it, you get search as well. And yes, Apple has added the protocol to macOS Catalina. So if that's where you run your SMB shares from, you can search away. So basically, if you can see it, you can access it. And if you can't see it, well, that's where Simple Contacts comes in. No more appointments, no more waiting rooms, no more overpaying. Simple Contacts brings a doctor's office to wherever you are, whenever you need it, so you can skip the office visits, but not the care. And if you have an unexpired prescription, just upload a photo of it or your doctor's info and order your lenses in minutes for a great price. They do all the hard work, all for you. Here's how it works. Using your phone or computer, you can take the Simple Contacts vision test in five minutes from literally anywhere. Then, a real doctor reviews your test in 24 hours, and if your vision hasn't changed, writes you a new prescription. And boom, a fresh supply of your brand of lenses is on its way to your door. Best of all, you get $20 off your first Simple Contacts order just by going to simplecontacts.com vector20 or entering vector20 at checkout. This isn't a replacement for your periodic full eye health exam. You still need that, but it is the most convenient way to renew a prescription and reorder your contacts if your vision hasn't changed. Again, get $20 off your first Simple Contacts order just by going to simplecontacts.com vector20 or entering vector20 at checkout. Thanks Simple Contacts and thanks to all of you for your support. So am I kind of bummed that Apple wasn't able to figure out a next generation file access system for the future? Something that uses machine learning to present you the files you probably want, when you probably want them, with nearest neighbor suggestions to easily widen your options, with Siri to hunt down and find anything else you could possibly want, no matter where it has been siloed or buried, like the Mac has had for a couple years now already. You bet, and I very much hope we get there someday soon. Likewise, going kinda in a traditional file system, but not yet providing all the functionality of a traditional file system. But I'm ecstatic we're finally getting something for now, something good enough for now, and light years better than the nothing we've had up until now. At least that's what I think. If you've been using iPadOS or iOS 13, or even if you're just curious, hit like, hit subscribe, and then hit up the comments below with all of your thoughts and questions. Thank you so much for watching and see you next video.